how to earn passive income in the DeFi space using liquidity pools such as Uniswap or the newly released Mooniswap. In this video, I'll explain in simple terms what liquidity pools are, why they're super necessary for the DeFi space, and also how you can become a yield farmer and earn passive income with your cryptocurrency. I'll also explain the inherent risks associated with liquidity pools. My name is Kieran and I'll be your guide on your DeFi adventures. The DeFi space is a super dangerous seller of hacks, scams and shillers out there to steal the money away from you. And I want you to be safe. That's why I'll be your map and compass and share with you some valuable knowledge to make sure that you succeed on your journey to financial independence. With that said, let's dive right into the video. So you may have heard of the decentralized exchange Uniswap especially if you had to swap some cryptocurrency, some ETH for ERC-20 tokens or ERC-20 tokens with each other. And the decentralized exchange Uniswap makes this possible. And the great thing is that when you transact ERC-20 tokens with another ERC-20 tokens, you can do that in a single transaction. And that's only possible thanks to the Uniswap protocol. Now, when you're on here and you swap different tokens with each other, this is only possible because each pair that you're swapping for each other. So for example, if I have ETH and then I'd select maybe DAI or wrapped ETH, let's say wrapped ETH. Well, for this trading pair, there's a liquidity pool behind it. And for that liquidity pool, there's a liquidity provider. And that might be you. And for each trade, that liquidity provider earns fees. But more about that later on. Now, I think I'll, I'll explain it with a uh, graphic as that is pretty easy to understand. All right, so you've got Bob here and he's going on to the decentralized exchange Uniswap and wants to exchange DAI for the Maker token. So the Maker token is a token for MakerDAO. So he sends his DAI, this DAI goes into the ETH DAI liquidity pool and the DAI token increases, the ETH decreases as it gets sent to another liquidity pool, the ETH maker liquidity pool, the ETH increases and the maker token decreases as it gets sent to Bob and the transaction is finished. The great thing is that all of this happens in a single smart contract, a single transaction, which is great because it reduces the fees. Now, this is only possible because you've got two liquidity pools. You've got the ETH DAI liquidity pool on the left and the ETH maker liquidity pool on the right. And this is important, especially for ESC20 to ESC20 transactions. If you've only got an ETH to ESC20 transaction, then it would be enough to have only a single liquidity pool. So for example, ETH to DAI, you'd only have to have the li liquidity pool ETH DAI. Now, these liquidity pools are only possible because there are some people, like maybe you or me, that want to earn some yield by providing cryptocurrency. So there are people that are providing in equal USD valuations ETH and DAI to the ETH DAI liquidity pool. So if they, for example, they send 100 US dollars worth of ETH to this liquidity pool, they also have to send 100 US dollars worth of DAI to the same liquidity pool. The same with the ETH maker liquidity pool. Now you might be wondering why they do that. Well, the answer is simple. Each time that someone performs a transaction, they have to pay a fee on this transaction. So for a ETH to ERC20 token transaction, the trader like Bob here in this case would have to pay 0.3%. And this 0.3% of the tr total trading amount gets um, split up uh, among all the liquidity providers. So all, for example, Alice here on the left, the liquidity provider for ETH DAI liquidity pool will get a small portion of these trading fees. And the more trades that happen for a certain liquidity pool, the more that person earns by being a liquidity provider. Now for ESC20 to ESC20 transactions is a little bit different since as you can see here, you've got always two liquidity pools. So now in the case for Bob, exchanging DAI for a maker, he would have to pay two liquidity um, pools. That means he has to pay 0.3% on the left and 0.3%. So a total of 0.6% to make this transaction. So this is the basic gist of what a liquidity pool is and why it's necessary. So these liquidity pools allow Trader Bob to make these transactions, especially ESC20 to ESC20 tokens possible without having to 
do all these swaps manually because he would have to swap die for ETH manually and then sell this ETH uh, from Acre. And that would be like three or four transactions. And now we can do all of this in one single transaction. Now, if you want to learn more about what pools are available, there's a really great website called pools.fyi. I can link it down below. And then what you can do here on the right hand side, you've got a drop down. You can click on it and you can select which liquidity provider you'd like to select. And in our case, we'll go with Uniswap version two. So you can click on that and then you can get all the information, the liquidity of the pool, the, the pools here, the pool name and the, the volume in the last 24 hours. The higher the volume, the more trading fees are going to be generated and divided among the liquidity providers. And on here on the right hand side, you've got the return on investment for the last 30 days. So for example, here, the Uniswap wrapped ETH Ampliforth um, liquidity pool had plus 20.44% in uh, ROI in yield. All right, you can uh, look through this list um, at your leisure. Now, how do you become a liquidity provider? Well, that's actually pretty simple. You can do that. First, we'll look at Uniswap. When you're on the Uniswap um, exchange, you can click on pool, but I suggest to first click on connect to a wallet. And you're gonna have to connect with a, a web free enabled wallet or with um, a connection such as Wallet Connect. Many different mobile, uh, if you're mobile wallets, accept Wallet Connect. So I'm gonna use Wallet Connect. I can scan the QR code with my Wallet Connect app on my phone. I click on Wallet Connect, I've got a QR code, and then I can just scan and approve and they will be connected to the Uniswap exchange. Now I click on pool. Now the important thing when you add liquidity is you're going to have to have both of the assets that you'd like to supply. Let's make an example. Um, if DAI liquidity pool, I will have to have 100 US dollars in ETH and 100 US dollars in DAI on my Ethereum wallet before I supply this liquidity. I have to have these assets in order to supply. So 50% of um, both of these assets. Then I can click on add liquidity. Then I can select the two assets for which I'd like to add liquidity and they will be added to that uh, trading pairs liquidity pool. So for example, here I can select, I've got RPL token, that's rocket pool token on my Ethereum wallet. So I can select RPL and as you can see, I've got 373 RPL. I can select that. And if I input 0 0.5 ETH, I will have to also send 61.89 RPL tokens. The USD valuation for both of these is the same. Down here, I see a lot of interesting information such as the cost, the RPL per ETH, and the ETH per RPL, and also how much my liquidity that I'm providing is going to be uh, in terms of um, a share of the whole pool. So in my case, it would be 0.1%. Now, the only thing that you'd have to do to, to um, add this liquidity is click on approve and then click on supply. I'm not going to do that because the transaction fees, smart contract fees on Ethereum now are just um, crazy high and I don't want to <laughs> spend that much right now. All right. So that basically that's the way that you do it. I think it makes sense if you're providing like thousand US dollars plus as then the trading fees and so on balance out the smart contract fees. The decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap and the newly released Mooniswap use something called AMM, that's Automated Market Maker Algorithm. That helps the protocol to find the, de the best um, trade for a, a, a trader with the least slippage possible. Now this new decentralized exchange that has just been recently released by the one inch exchange um, team is called Mooniswap. They improved the AMM algorithm by a considerable amount and they managed to decrease the slippage that is happening on this decentralized exchange. And by doing that, they can increase the, the rewards that liquidity providers get through trading fees by 50 to 200% because the decentralized exchange is gonna earn a lot more income. So here we've got some graphs that can zoom in. An example is the DAI ETH trading pair or liquidity pool. You've got Mooniswap, which is uh, purple, Mooniswap LP income. And as you can see here, it's uh, around maybe 550,000. And the Uniswap version two LP income is only at 290,000 with the same amount of transactions. So the income that is generated is a lot higher 
that means that when you take a percentage of this income, the liquidity provider is going to earn a lot more in rewards. So this is great. And the same is with the USDC ETH liquidity pool, the ETH USDT liquidity pool and the USDC and USDT. So basically most of the liquidity pools will be earning a lot more rewards for liquidity providers on the new MoneySwap exchange. So the way that you use MooniSwap is basically the same way as you use Uniswap. You click on connect to a wallet and then you can connect with one of these MetaMask, Wallet Connect, Coinbase Wallet, Formatic or Protis. And then as again, you click on the pool and then you can provide liquidity. In this case, it will be providing ETH and RPL in the same amounts. It's always the same way. Then you connect with the wallet and then you approve the token and supply. Really simple. However, at the moment, there are pretty high trading um, smart contract fees. Now, what I'd like to um, share with you that is super important, and that is the risk associated with using a liquidity pool, and that is impermanent loss. Impermanent loss, easily explained, is basically the amount of gains that you would receive by just hodling one of the tokens in the trading pair. So if DAI has got a little bit less risk, since DAI is a stable coin. However, the price of ETH can change. It can go up or it can go down. And basically this difference when it goes up or down is considered impermanent loss. The more it goes up, the higher the impermanent loss. So it's the it's loss of missing out on potential gains. And that is the basic explanation. You've got a graph about this impermanent loss. Maybe an easy explanation. If you've got a 1.25x price change results in a 0.6% loss relative to hodling. In most cases, if you've got the ETH trading pair, this impermanent loss is based on if you would hold ETH instead of adding liquidity to the liquidity pool. A 2x price change results in 5.7% loss relative to hodl. A 5x price change results in a 25.5% loss relative to hodl. Now you might be wondering, okay, with this impermanent loss, why would someone even provide liquidity to a liquidity pool? And the reason that people do is because the rewards that you will get for trading fees very often are much higher than this impermanent loss and it can it cancels the impermanent loss out. So the way that you calculate it is that you take the amount of trading fees, the rewards through the trading fees that you'll be earning minus the impermanent loss and that is your net return on investment. There's a great website that you can use called Uniswap Roy, and here you can filter by highest yield. It's completely free. There's a paid version, but um, the, the free version, you can look at the pools. And then here you can go down and you can look at the different um, liquidity pools. You can see the expected fees that you'd be earning the expected impermanent loss due to price change of one of the trading pairs and the Uniswap return on investment. So this re Uniswap return on investment is like I just mentioned, it's by taking the expected fees that you'd be earning minus the expected impermanent loss. And then you've got the equivalent um, annual percent rate that you'd be earning calculate onto, on, onto a year. So as you can see for this uh, liquidity pool, this uh, uh, equivalent APR is just mind blowing high, 1,183% for the SUSD if um, the if SUSD uh, liquidity pool is also super high, it's at 38.90% um, forecasted for the next 30 days and 473% annual yield. Crazy amount. Now, of course, these amounts, it's not sustainable for the long term. But if you're interested in just like uh, <laughs> being a short term uh, yield farmer for maybe the next month or so, I don't know, maybe it's something for you. You have to um, judge if it's if it's worth the risk. You also have to enter with a considerable amount of money, thousand US dollars plus, to make sure that it's actually worth it since the, tra the smart contract transa uh, transaction fees are super high at the moment. Now there's another great website that's pretty cool to use. That is um, basically the Uniswap Roy returns on zoomzoom.github.io. I also link it down below so you can use it. On the left hand side here, you can select the token that is in the same trading pair with ETH. So for example, Maker, it would be the Maker ETH liquidity pool. You could also take the wrapped ETH liquidity pool. So with the Maker ETH liquidity pool, I can just click on that. And I've got this open now. When you hover over one of the days, so let's take um, 14th of July, for example, you had 42.41 ETH in trading volume. The net profit is 2.72%. And that is 
um, calculated by subtracting impermanent loss minus 0.26% from the collected fees, which is 3%. As you can see, the net profit is much higher than impermanent loss. That's why people provide liquidity. Now there's a way to combat this impermanent loss. And I haven't seen this mentioned too often. And that's by taking a liquidity pool um, trading pair that is basically the same asset. What do I mean by that? Well, there are some assets that are super similar to each other. So if you take ETH, assets that are similar to ETH are wrapped ETH, and you've also got the synthetics ETH, S ETH. And if you take those assets and you provide liquidity for those, you're gonna basically have an impermanent loss of zero because if the price of ETH goes up, the price of wrapped ETH also goes up. If the price of um, ETH goes up, the price of S ETH also goes up. So if I click on a drop down and I go on wrapped ETH and I hover over a day, as you can see for here, we've got uh, collected fees 0.33%. The imper impermanent loss is 0% and net profit is 0.33%. Now the only downside with these um, Liquidity pools that are more or less with um, similar assets, such as wrapped ETH and ETH, they have a lot lower um, yield. So the yield is not gonna be high as a liquidity pool such as Ampleforth and ETH. That was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something new and you can continue your journey safe and sound with that. I wish you a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.